What is up you guys, I'm Charmix, today I'm going to be reacting to Film Theory Jigsaw Was Right by The Film Theorist. Now, I don't really know what to expect from this. I mean, what do you mean Jigsaw Was Right? Also, if you don't know who Jigsaw is, Jigsaw is a character from the Saw movies. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. With that being said, the original link's in the description. Make sure you guys go subscribe to The Film Theorist. Without any further ado, let's begin. Let's play a game. Your entire search and browsing history has been loaded into a bot that- no! We'll send it to everyone in your contacts <laughs> list in one hour. Oh, phew. I don't have anyone in my contacts. <laughs> hour. Every time you stalked your crush. Every time you googled your own name. Every time you asked WebMD about that weird thing on your foot. All of it will be exposed. The only way to prevent- I have a lot of WebMD stuff. I mean, I'm always- First off, I have panic problems. And paranoia. So I'm always afraid of something you know, going on, or, you know, what's this, what's this, what's that, I think I'm dying, blah, 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 you know, and right now, my cheek is swollen on this side, so I've been looking up why that, and I probably have to go to the doctors to get some antibiotics today, I don't know, and the WebMD part of my history is, is probably really long. To prevent this from happening is to find the secret message hidden somewhere in this video, and then leave it down in the comments below. Five words stand between you and embarrassment for life, all marked with this symbol. The clock is ticking, friends. The choice is yours. Live or die. Happy hunting. This is a weird freaking intro, man. Very well. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that cuts straight to the truth like a hacksaw through an ankle. Today we're going to be talking... I like that reference. ...about the Saw franchise, which is something I view much differently now than I did when it first came out. Back then I was all like, oh man, I wonder if I'd be determined enough to saw off my own foot to survive. Nowadays I'm more like, huh, that saw's looking pretty rusty. He'll be got himself a tetanus booster in the last five years. But I gotta admit, I have a ton of respect for the Saw movies doing things that no other horror movies do. And I'm not just talking about crushing people's heads between blocks of ice for- Ooh, safe for YouTube edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta be careful now. Friends, man. I mean, when I watch a horror movie, there are plenty of things that I can expect to get. Nightmares, anxiety, underwear stains. But you know what I don't expect to get? Team building exercises. You get that when you go to Taco Bell. Seriously, before the Saw movies came out, had anybody ever heard of an escape room? Not only did this franchise make me horrified of fluorescent lighted bathrooms in need of a good deep clean, but it also doomed many people to the fate of solving lightly thematic puzzles with acquaintances from around the office. The other rare thing that- I've done one of those before. Friggin' awful experience. Mostly because I'm not smart enough to solve the problems. The Saw franchise did was to give us a super villain with reasons behind what he's doing. Jigsaw's stated goal in the movies is to make people more appreciative for being alive and to motivate them to stop doing whatever terrible things that they're doing in their everyday life. You see, the knowledge of death changes everything if I were to tell you the exact date and time of your own death. It would shatter your world completely. You savor everything, be it a glass of water or a walk in the park. But most people have the luxury of not knowing when that clock's gonna go off. And the irony of it is that that keeps them from really living their life. Which is... That is quite accurate, I think. It's weirdly admirable, in a way. Certainly more admirable than Michael Myers, who just wants to kill because he's crazy, or Fred- HE'S CRAZY! Kruger, who wants to kill you for fun, or Leatherface, who wants to kill you because he needs your bones for furniture. I mean, don't get me wrong here. What the Jigsaw Killer is doing is twisted and gross and seems like an engineering nightmare, but I don't know, he's like a motivational poster. A bloody, bloody, murdery motivational poster. I've never murdered anyone in my life. The decisions are up to them. All right, John, sure you didn't kill any- It's a weird way to, uh... It's a weird way to make yourself innocent. Anyone saying you're not a murderer because the traps kill them is the same thing as shooting someone and claiming you didn't kill them, the gun did. Nice try, buddy. <laughs> Rationalizing away your horrific murder spree aside, the Saw franchise does bring up an interesting point. Is Jigsaw right? Is putting people into dangerous, painful, life-threatening, and ethically paradoxical circumstances leaving them better off? Assuming- No. <laughs> no, I think his message, you know, was quite uh, good, you know, cherish your life, cherish the moments, 
But I don't think doing this is a good way to go about getting people to cherish said moments. Being ...that the players of the games actually live through them, which is usually not the case. Well, let me tell you, after doing the research, Jigsaw isn't wrong. And today, I'm here to tell you why. So sharpen your hacksaws, stay away from pits full of needles, and steer clear of any tricycle riding puppets, because today we're diving deep into whether Jigsaw is, through his own twisted psychology, making the world a slightly better place. Now, the first Saw movie came out in two 2004 when the most wow. cutting edge game you can get on a cell phone was Snake. So even if you're a fan of the franchise, you might need a refresher on Jigsaw. Yeah, that was a long time ago. AKA John Kramer's motivation. So here's a recap and your official spoiler warning for the entire franchise. Hey! Thank you for the spoiler warning, Matt. Franchise. In the original Saw movie, Jigsaw kidnaps two men, Adam and Dr. Gordon, and gives them cryptic clues on what they have to do in order to escape the grody bathroom that they awaken in. But as the movie goes on, we slowly learn why Jigsaw chose these two for his game. He finds them both morally objectionable. Adam spies on people and sells his photos to blackmailers, and Dr. Gordon appears to be ignoring his family to have an extramarital affair. But it's when we see a flashback to one <coughs> of Jigsaw's surviving victims that we get the real motivation behind his games. Amanda, a drug addict, finds her head in a reverse bear trap that threatens to flip her skull inside out unless she finds a key to it in a dude's intestines. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Freaking crazy. Remarkably, she succeeds and is then given the creepiest end screen of any game ever. Congratulations, you are still alive. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you. Not anymore. So Jigsaw is teaching his victims little life lessons to help them realize that they are hashtag blessed. And it works for Amanda. After this traumatic ordeal, she overcomes her addiction, telling the police, He helped me. Jigsaw's goal is ultimately to help people turn their lives Look at that, he's just a crazy therapist. ...lives around, which mirrors his own journey as we find out in later movies. Jigsaw is a guy named John Kramer who got a double dose of bad news when his wife miscarried their unborn son and he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. When he survives an attempt to end his own life, he becomes Yikes. determined to... ...testing the fabric of human nature. ...by teaching others that... ...those who don't appreciate life do not deserve life. In short, he wants to almost kill people so that they'll snap out of their bad behavior, or, you know, they just fail and die. Though, to be fair, John, if this was truly your stated goal, you would give them, I don't know, a little bit more than 60 seconds to dislodge the key that was surgically implanted behind their eye to remove them from the spiked Iron Maiden that's about to snap their head in two. Just saying. Obviously, it's all a psychopathic idea, right? You yeah, it is pretty freaking crazy. It's not it's not done by the mind of a sane, normal person. Can't play mousetrap with people's lives. But for as crazy as Jigsaw's logic is, it's not without precedent. Throughout history, many philosophers have seen Trump yeah, no, it, it, he's definitely, definitely might work what he's doing. It's just definitely not the most recommended way to go about doing it, I think. You know, I think therapy might be better. <laughs> like normal therapy, not this kind of therapy. Trauma and suffering as a means of achieving personal growth, such as Schopenhauer, Kierkegaard, and most notably, Friedrich Nietzsche. With his catchphrase that God is dead and that luxurious mustache, Nietzsche rode the line between emo and hipster better than any other 19th century German philosopher. And he was famous for- The mustache does not go with emo. It definitely goes with hipster. Not being all sunshine and rainbows in his thinking. In his 1886 work, Beyond Good and Evil, Nietzsche presents a couple of philosophies that jigs Saw would likely retweet on Twitter. Nietzsche claimed that society evaluates actions based on intention rather than consequence. And he's right about that because society's laws are generally based on intention. Let's say that there's a burglar roaming around your neighborhood. So to protect yourself and your neighbors, you drop an anvil on its head wily e. Coyote style. The law would say that your intention was to harm someone, and therefore your anvil drop was immoral, and more importantly to you, a ruling of murder. Nietzsche would look at your action and say that because it's consequence was good, i.e. people not being robbed of their jewelry and electronics and Pokemon cards, then the action would be a moral one. In other words, Nietzsche believed that the ends justify the means, and that an action with positive consequences is moral regardless of its motivation or execution. Nietzsche is saying that the results are what really matter in determining the right thing to do. Oh, this is really big brain stuff, man. I'm trying to hard to get my head around all this. <laughs> I'm too stupid today. And the everyday results determine the right action. Like, I get that. I can see where that's coming from, but I definitely don't think the ends justify the means. You know, if the means hurt other people, you know, they damage some someone or something, then I don't know if that justifies it, I guess. Or there's more of an argument there to be had whether it justifies it or not. 
Someone who sees the same burglar and calls the police or warns <laughs> the police aren't going to do anything. They're going to show up 20 minutes late. The neighborhood might have a purer intention than the anvil dropper, but those shouldn't be considered because their consequences are less effective. The police might not arrive, or they might let the burglar go and commit future burglaries. Warned neighbors might still get robbed, but if you smush that burglar on the sidewalk like a pancake, you can be sure that he's committed his last burglary, and therefore Nietzsche would consider it the most moral of the choices, because its consequence, no more burglaries, was the most certain. And then he'd lean back in his chair and comb the that epic 19th century mustache of his. Jigsaw presumably agrees given that he considers himself morally righteous in playing these games. He figures that if some people can be saved or improved as a result of the torture, then the torture was the right thing. Even more importantly, Nietzsche believed that progress was the result of suffering. Specifically, he wrote this, quote, the discipline of suffering, of great suffering. Don't you realize that up to this point, it is only this suffering which has created every enhancement in man up to now. That tension of a soul in misery, which develops its strength. Has that not been given to it through suffering? Through the discipline of great suffering? Again, to train. He's kind of right there, you know. Uh, through suffering and through pain, there's growth. You know, through suffering of just, just inventions. People suffered having to walk for miles or ride a horse for miles. So, you know, they invented the wheel. Or then they invented the, the, uh, the engine to drive. So there's suffering, and then because of suffering, there's growth. Translate that from cranky German philosopher to English, Nietzsche was saying that all of mankind's progress is the result of suffering, and therefore, we should embrace it. Well, if that ain't Jigsaw to the letter, I don't know what is. If mankind's greatness is the result of suffering, Jigsaw figures he can just add more suffering into the mix and create better people as a result. Okay, so Jigsaw studied some philosophy to impress people in college. We've all been there, or at least I've been there, because I studied Kantian philosophy in college to impress my now wife, Stephanie. Humble brag! Humble brag! I don't know, it was the only class that I ever skipped. It was senior year and just a bonus class that I was taking to fill out my schedule. Also, in my defense, still got an A. Anyway, just because some of Jigsaw's principles are rooted in the thoughts of great philosophers doesn't necessarily mean he's right. Do his games actually change the survivors for the better? Surprisingly, yes. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. He was abusive. But it wasn't until that moment that it really did something. While, to be fair, most of the players wind up dead, a shocking number of survivors wind up with a new outlook on life. It's something that the series deals pretty heavily with in Saw 3D. During a group therapy session for survivors of Jigsaw's games, we hear that many- I have not seen this group therapy session thing before. I don't know, what, what movie is this from? Like, I've, I've seen a couple of the Saws, but I think there's like seven of them, isn't there? Like, I've not seen them all. They found themselves a new outlook on life. I am simply here to illustrate the fact that a traumatic experience can have a positive outcome. But if you look around at all of these people, taking their lives for granted, Eventually, they all found something positive from their experience. Heck, both Amanda and Dr. Gordon from the first Saw movie not only survive, but also end up adopting Jigsaw's philosophy, helping him set up his games with new participants in future films. So, some philosophers agree with Jigsaw, many of the surviving victims of the movies agree with Jigsaw, but does the science agree with Jigsaw? I suppose- But we all know the law doesn't. <laughs> To convince you, you'd need some real-world evidence that the kind of trauma Jigsaw subjects his victims to actually has benefits. Well, let me introduce you to Richard Tedeschi and Lawrence Calhoun, psychologists and creators of the Post-Traumatic Growth Index. In studies conducted in the 1990s, Tedeschi and Calhoun set out to see if they could measure the positive impact of disasters in people's lives. Whether that was being diagnosed with a terminal illness, being a victim of violence, or surviving a natural disaster. And the results for the survivors of these traumatic events were positive. Survivors self-reported positive change in the direction of their lives overwhelmingly. 80% said that they had established a new path for their lives, and 76% reported that they were able to do better things with their lives. A That's pretty good. Pretty good uh, percentage. Separate study compared survivors of trauma to those who had experienced no major trauma. The results found that the survivors outscored the control group in terms of their ability to relate to others, personal strength, and most importantly for Jigsaw, their appreciation of life. All in all, 60% of participants expressed that there was a positive effect on themselves after the trauma. So that kind of means Jigsaw is right, doesn't it? Tra in a way, yes. I mean, if they're now, if you could only do a. How do I say this? If he only had it 
so that people wouldn't actually pass away and it was kind of like a trick, but it made them appreciate life. Maybe that would be better, you know? And so instead of, oh, let's, let's actually take this person's life. It might be better to say, let's make them think that this will happen. Let's make them think that this and that will happen to them, but not actually happen to them. Because, uh, you know, that way they'll still get the therapeutic appreciation for life, but they also won't lose theirs. Trauma's messy to be sure, but science shows that overwhelmingly it leads to improvements in people's perceptions of themselves and their lives. The victims in the movie agree, ye oldie philosophers agree, and science agrees. That's it, theory over, slapping on a thumbnail, we're done with another Halloween season upload. Except for one thing, John Kramer didn't read himself the fine print. This is why you always gotta read past the headlines, people, because while yes, 60% of participants expressed a positive effect after the trauma, a How many percentage- or of them have PTSD. Whopping 94% said that they experienced either some or extreme negative consequences as such as PTSD as a result of the trauma. Estimates vary, but experts believe that people who experience some acute form of physical trauma have between a 20 and 50% chance of developing acute stress disorder and or post-traumatic stress disorder. There, there we go. Freaking called it. Order, both of which often manifest in nightmares, flashbacks, increased likelihood of self-harm. Sure, if you survive a plane crash, you might appreciate your life a bit more and not get bothered by little things as much. Decide to take that improv class. The very cheesy green screen effect there. Class that you always wanted to, but you're also much- Hey look, there's a swirl, there's a swirl! There's a swirl, it's supposed to mean something, right? I don't know. It's likelier to suffer panic attacks and have your daily routine more interrupted, so it's pretty short-sighted to say that introducing trauma into people's lives will only help them. And you know what? Jigsaw, of all people, should understand that because most of his trauma was damaging to him rather than helpful. After he lost his unborn son, his response was grief and depression. Not, wow, my life is suddenly better. <laughs> he was diagnosed with cancer, more grief and depression, not sunshine and rainbows. It took him a third trauma, the near-death experience of ending his own life, for him to have his quote-unquote epiphany. But the whole situation should have told him that the typical result of a traumatic event is not some positive life- Yeah, I think Matt's right here. Affirming change. It is insecurity. It is depression. It is grief. It is post-traumatic stress. Turns out that maybe- I do, however, think that- these kind of like horrible situations do build character and they do build personality and they do build you if it doesn't like, you know, destroy you. We shouldn't be looking to a serial murderer for philosophical and psychological guidance. Who knew? In the words of one of his former survivors, You wanna know the best thing that happened to me after having to cut off my own arm? Is handicapped parking at the damn mall! Everyone's a critic, I guess. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And game over. It was a pretty, uh, pretty good episode. Handicap parking at the mall. <laughs> okay. Uh, I hope you guys liked this uh, video. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And I think, I think Matt's right. I think that, well, but I, I think trauma does build character. And I think... Obviously, struggle, if you come through struggle, it can build, you know, who you are and it can make progress. Just like, you know, people don't like to uh, ride horses, so they build a carriage. People don't like carriage and want to go faster, so they build cars. That's progress, but it's from not being satisfied. It's from uh, wanting more and it's from uh, the struggle, I guess. So, you know, in that case or in that situation, I think struggle definitely does build or uh it can be positive if you manage to get through it um but uh, anyway whatever with that being said i hope you guys like this give it a thumbs up if you're new hit subscribe to the family make sure you guys go subscribe to the film theorist and uh, i think i rate this out of a 10 for theory for theory i actually really liked it uh, i had a lot of the uh, theoretical ideas going on in that probably i rate it like an 8.2 but with that being said i'll see you guys next time Boop.